Through me you go to the grief wreck city. Through me to everlasting pain you go. Through me you go and pass among lost souls. Justice inspired my exalted creator. I am a creature of the holiest power. Of wisdom in the highest and of primal love. Nothing until I was made was made. Only eternal beings. And I endure eternally. Surrender as you enter every hope you have. Right, now that I've successfully put the fear of hell into you all, I'd like to bid you all an infernal welcome to the Lava Reef Zone. This level's gimmick? A volcano. Yeah, not really worthy of a quote from Dante, but it's the closest thing I'm going to get to my demonic homestead in this game. Also, I firmly believe this place to be one of the hardest levels in the entire game. Fun, but challenging. The combination of lava pits, flamethrowers, rolling spiky balls, the second hardest sub-boss in the game, poisonous robots, and wall-mounted fireball launchers make this place worthy of respect. No respect, it'll end you with impunity. Speaking of poisonous robots, the Toxomister, known as Poison, I think, in Japan, is what seems to be a stick with an eyeball on top that constantly looks stoned off its tits. Should you get caught in its mist cloud, you lose one ring per second. If you're in super or hyper form, you lose two rings per second. Destroy the robot's eye to break free. The next enemy we encounter is a bit unstable, and to be honest, if I had a small bomb fitted into my skull, I'd be a bit on edge as well. But <laughs> that's not gonna stop me trolling it to death. Watch this. Hey, you! A grey horse with a blonde mane just stole your muffins! What the f- Ah, uh, deadly references. Anyway, the Iwamodoki, which translates to Pseudo Rock in English, is yet another robot that can't be killed by Sonic. Following the example of the Rockins from level 9, they disguise themselves as harmless rocks, and then wake up and explode when Sonic comes near them. The explosion itself can't hurt you, and if you have a shield equipped, the shrapnel from the blast won't hurt you either. And upon detonating, the critter trapped inside will be set loose. One thing that always bugs me about these things, when they burst, you see 100 points float above them, but these points are never added to your score. Personally, I could care less about the score counter, but to make the player think they received something and then never actually give it to them is a pretty dickish thing to do. Shame on you, Sega. I've got no idea what the hell that thing was. It seems to be a variation on Tunnelbot, the Marble Garden Zone sub-boss. But since all it does is open the path forward and immediately kill itself in a pit of lava, I'd say it's too bloody stupid to remember its own name anyway. Attack it if you want, you can't kill it, just watch out for the lava in the room below. Spend a few minutes in this level and you'll soon become acquainted with these jet-powered platforms. Be very careful with these. Standing on top of them may seem like a smart idea. Up to the point where you realise that most of them are placed in corridors that have low ceilings or are lined with spikes. There are a few that allow you to stand on them and grant access to hidden areas, and some that are needed to progress. Just be sure you know what's above them before you try standing on them. Oh, and, uh, word of advice, never stand underneath them. It hurts. Sadly, despite my best attempts, I was unable to reach this warp ring. Normally, the character-specific rings can only be found in the character-specific areas. This one, however, is dangled in front of you like a carrot on a string. Close enough to see, but too far away to reach. Okay, we're inside a volcano complete with flamethrowers, vast pits of lava, and wall-mounted fireball launchers. Go ahead and take a wild guess as to which shield I recommend. Answers in the comments. The winner gets mentioned in my next video. The losers get shot for the good of mankind. The rolling spiked balls are dotted around Act 1 and can be easily avoided, since most of them are found in the hidden areas, out of sight of the main path. I'm not sure what the deal is with these things. Possibly a nod to Raiders of the Lost Ark? Or possibly a reminder of King Sisyphus of Greek mythology? 
Or most likely the art team were having an off day and couldn't be bothered to make something that actually looked threatening. Among the assortment of environmental hazards are stalactites. Not a common threat, but more suitable for a hazard inside a volcano. Keep an eye on the ceiling. The stalactites stand out like, well, stalactites on an otherwise smooth ceiling. Get too close, and they drop. A simple hazard and easily avoided. So unless you're a complete dumbass and walk slowly underneath them, you shouldn't have any problems. <clears throat> Moving on. These strange devices can be moved by using the spin dash ability. You only find them in Act 1, but you need to use them to progress. Spin to the left, you move down, and vice versa. Sometimes you can bypass these things with the lightning shield or hypersonics double jump, but most of them simply block your way and require interaction. The Heat Arms are this week's sub-bosses. They consist of two antennae looking things that raise from either side of the screen, and a large hand that raises from the center and follows you around. The antennae hover in place and shoot a volley of six small projectiles, three from each side. The weak spot is the spinning ball. Four hits each, and they'll go down. The best time to hit them is when they're raising and falling off screen, since they're too high to hit when fully extended, so a hypersonic or a lightning shield is recommended for this fight. The giant hand will follow you around for a while, then stop still for a second before slamming down on the ground. Being underneath it when that happens is an instant kill. I've known this thing kill Supersonic in one hit like that. Hypersonic seems to be immune to this attack, but I'd recommend not trying it. Six hits to the hand when it's on the ground, and this boss is no longer a threat. Good luck. Act 2 starts by going down the Minecraft route of having rapidly cooling lava turn into obsidian. Word of advice guys, you need a certain type of falsic lava to make obsidian, not any old molten rock you happen to find. Interesting fact, obsidian isn't actually a rock. It's a glass. Getting back to the game, you'll no doubt notice the sudden change of scenery. Act 2 is less a lava filled cave and more a partial ruin, fitted with flamethrowers. The change is such that one could easily be forgiven in thinking this was a completely different level. Even the music sounds like it shouldn't be inside a volcano. I only mention this because up until this point, the different acts have simply been markers for the halfway point of levels, with both acts being similar, but with a few alterations in design and music with the possible exception of the Sandopolis Zone. While here, the change is such that you almost forget you're in the same level. Call me an artistic ponce if you want, but I love the way this act looks and sounds. It makes you aware that things are about to change. You're no longer slugging through the assorted backdrops of the floating island's different areas, and you begin to feel that you're finally getting close to something important. Granted, the lava comes back for the level boss, but until then, we have a nice blue and cyan cave, complete with relaxing music. What I'm basically trying to say is, enjoy this serenity while it lasts, because it doesn't last long. Artistic dribble aside, you've no doubt noticed these spinning columns. The spiky bits hurt you, obviously, so grab onto the ladders. The trick with these things is to jump off when Sonic is being swung upwards. It sounds simple on paper, but it may take a few tries to find that sweet spot, and a few more tries to grab the ladder on the column above you. Before I get sidetracked with this level's natural beauty again, I'd like to talk about the level's final robotic enemy, the Fireworm, known as the Mamba in Japan. It's another worm-like robot that hides in holes located in the background walls and they only appear when Sonic comes close to them. Usual tactic applies, hit their head, avoid the tail. Simple enough, just be careful of the spikes and fire. Take note people, this is the final warp ring of the level, and as such, the final warp ring of the entire game. That's it. 
No more. The game past this point is one huge warp ring free zone. And if you still don't have hypersonic, then I'm afraid you're shit out of luck. For the rest of you, you now have to start conserving those rings. The levels are only going to get harder from here on. So hypersonic, or supersonic if you're just playing Sonic and Knuckles, is now a technique that can only be used when it's absolutely necessary. For example, boss fights, level 14, or when you're about to die and transforming can help you survive. Don't get me wrong, you still have a lot of leeway when it comes to transformation. All I'm saying is, you get no more huge stacks of rings. So be smart on how you use them. To the left you can see the latest resting place of the Death Egg. And straight ahead is a red tosser with a boulder. Yeah, look there, Sonic. Let's see if you can catch this. Oh, shit. This place is technically Act 3. First order of business, move. Yep, we've got a scrolling stage, people, complete with lava pits and pitfalls. And laser guided missiles to join the landscape. Believe it or not, this is actually the difficult bit. The boss itself is a joke. Your success here depends on how good your platforming skills are. So all I can suggest is, try and stay in the centre of the screen and jump to the next platform as soon as possible. You can safely ignore the missiles, since they only detonate at the back half of the screen. The main problems here are the two pitfalls. Thankfully, this star post can help if you're having difficulties. Due to technical bullshit beyond my comprehension, my FPS dropped here. I didn't notice until I reviewed the footage. This isn't a problem with the game. More a problem with the age of my computer, and the amount of moving shit in the background. I can only apologise for this, but there's nothing I can do. Please don't hate me. Sonic, old chap, behold my latest invention, the Hotmobile. Capable of manipulating the very lava beneath your feet. And it can launch lava-proof spiky mines as well. Yes, that would be impressive if the mines didn't flow with the lava and burst in your face. I know what I'm doing, Hedgehog. Yeah, so do I. It's called suicide. Oh, shut up. By the looks of it, this invention of yours is too sturdy and spiky to be attacked directly by me or my transform state. So if you don't mind, I think I'll just hop from platform to platform and let you beat yourself up. Yes, now that I think about it, it does seem a truly pathetic idea. You could always, you know, stop. I can't, actually. Automate the attack program, you see. Yes, well, while you're doing that, I've got something I need to tell the people. Yes, yes, go ahead, don't mind me. Okay, since this is technically Act 3, if you have over 100 rings when you come here, you gain an extra life if you collect one of the rings at the start. And if you have over 200 rings, you can gain two extra lives. Yeah, it's not that you barely will need them. Aren't you dead yet? Stop mocking me! I have something planned for the levels ahead. This may be a failure, but I will never give up! Well, now that that overdramatic prick is gone, we can finish this act and say goodbye to the Lava Reef Zone. What? No bottomless pit for me to stumble down? <laughs> Must be my lucky day. See ya!